today we're talking about the Freefly Movi Cinema Robot, and we're doing it from Palermo, Soho, in Buenos Aires. So I ordered this Firefly Movi Cinema Robot back in December of 2017. It didn't ship till about a week ago, right before I was heading out for this trip here in Buenos Aires for a presentation I'm doing. And I brought it with me because I thought it'd be a great time to talk about this product. And luckily, uh, Leo Hans is shooting this today and he lives right here in Buenos Aires and is a big Fonica Pro user and was very gracious to come along with me and shoot this today. So let's check it out. I really like the container that the uh, movie comes in because it's a very lightweight but sturdy styrofoam case, a little tab to make it easy to open, and I was able to just throw this whole thing uh, right in my suitcase. So let's take a look at this guy. It comes on a stand, so the stand's built in, it's very easy to sit anywhere you want to, and it's also locked into position by default. There's a small tab here that you can pop to unlock it. And you've got your three different gimbals here, here, and here for your three different rotational axes. There's a clamp on the back that you can press in order to install it. And it just slides in. Now, before you turn it on, it's a good idea to get the basic balance in place. So you can just slip it back and forth until it's roughly balanced. And it has a power button here and immediately balances once you turn it on. It comes with an app, free app from the App Store that's very intuitive and easy to use. Now on the side, the batteries are contained in here. There's two 2000 milliamp lithium ion batteries in here, uh, and you can replace these with your own. So if you can buy these, I'm not familiar with these, but apparently you can buy these and charge them and then uh, pull these out and put other ones in in order to keep shooting. You can also hook this up to a power supply and record continuously. The front has a trigger control that by default will create a freeze of the current orientation of the camera. This is the trigger button for recording. You can also use the control on the camera, just tap the screen on the camera. I found this to be a little difficult to use. You have to touch it really up top high for it to function properly. On the back here are a set of four controls. The middle control here, can you zoom out to see the full screen here? The middle control unlocks focus and exposure and then you press it again to lock it back in. The up and down buttons then will adjust that exposure. The button on the right will switch to the rear facing camera. There's Leo, hi Leo. <laughs> and then switch back again. And the button on the left will go to play mode and it will play your most recent video that you've shot. So you choose a mode by tapping in the bottom left corner. The default mode is Majestic, which is probably the one you'll use the most, although many of these are really cool. So in Majestic mode, by default, the tilt and the roll are locked. So it won't roll and it won't tilt. It will only pan. Now, even though the tilt is locked, I can change it just by moving the camera to create a different framing. And now that will be locked and it will just pan. Now, as you pan the camera, you've got some options on how that's handled. You've got a response and a window. The response determines how quickly the camera moves to follow the movement of the gimbal. So, for instance, if I go to slow and I move the gimbal, the camera moves slowly to follow it. But if you have a fast-moving subject and you go to fast, the camera will very quickly adjust. I like to keep this at about medium. Now the 
window is very interesting. The window determines how much you can move the gimbal and the camera won't move. So by default, you move the gimbal and the camera moves pretty quickly. If I set this all the way to the five bars here, I can move the gimbal quite a bit without any motion from the camera. So it gives a more stable shot basically with no panning unless you really turn the gimbal a lot. And if you go to no bars, it's very responsive and jumps immediately. So it's not changing the speed that it moves, just when it kicks in. And I like to leave that at that default setting as well. The next mode I want to look at is Echo. Echo lets you set a start and ending position and the camera will automatically move between them. So I'm going to go down and look at this flower to start, press the trigger to set the starting framing. Then I want to end up here. I can also choose to pan for the move. Let's say I'll move it over a little bit like that. Press the trigger to set that. It automatically goes back to the starting position. I can choose the duration here. I'll use the default five seconds. Start recording and press the trigger and we get a little countdown so we can make sure we're not touching the device. And we get a beautiful pan and or tilt. So one thing to be careful about when you're walking with the Moby Firefly or any gimbal for that matter is that they stabilize around each axis for pan, roll, and tilt, but not along the axis. It's not possible to do that. For instance, if you bounce up and down when you walk, you're still going to get bouncing in the video. And Leo here is walking backwards filming, which is very dangerous, and the sidewalks are really uneven, but he's doing a great job. So you want to try to be as steady as careful and do a little bit of a Groucho Marx walk when you're walking and filming with this. hardware, I, I love the form factor. It's lightweight, it's sturdy, it's plastic, but it's sturdy, and it's very portable. I love that you can just set it down, balance it very easily when you set up, pick it up and go. You can go put it on a table anywhere and shoot, or a wall, or any flat surface. It doesn't really need to be that flat. You can hold it steady. And the battery lasts a long time. I shot uh, all day, two separate days. I charged overnight, but I went out and had uh, no problem. I got down to maybe three out of the five bars altogether. So, uh, the hardware is great. The software is great too. In terms of the mode, I use the majestic mode almost all the time. Uh, I usually leave it with tilt and roll locked. I love the fact that you can also lock the panning. By default it pans, which makes sense. But if you find a framing you light, you can press the trigger, which will freeze the panning as well. So now no tilt, no roll, and no pan at all. And you can lock it on a subject just with a trigger and then you can let that go again. And by the way, that, that trigger finger is adjustable. You can change uh, what it does in the menus. In terms of the other modes in here, uh, I also love the echo mode, the ability to set up an A and a B framing and have it move between those smoothly with a smooth start and stop, and you set the duration of it. It's fast and easy to do a really nice pan slash tilt. Uh, that looks great. There's a little bit of, of trickiness about how you set those up because you need to move the base in some cases, but overall works great. I also like the uh, other options for the, the, um, the Echo is rather than just setting your own start and stop, you can choose left and right and up and down to just create an immediate quick pan or tilt. The movie lapse is also great. The thing about movie lapse is basically a hyperlapse. And the thing about it is you want to first set up your orientation perfectly because it locks in pan, tilt, roll, everything. So if you're walking down the street and doing a hyperlapse and you turn a corner, your framing is not going to turn the corner with you. It's going to want to keep going straight. So it'll keep oriented straight even though you're turning left, um, which is great if you're just going straight. But otherwise, you're, you're out of luck. So you could switch to a time lapse instead or just record normally and speed it up in post. The other great uh, mode in here I love is the time lapse. 
because it also lets you set um, your own A and B points, just like the movie laps, um, or up, down, left, right. And then you have a lot of options on your different, uh, basically compression, what it calls compression, how often it takes a shot, and then what your total duration is. Very intuitive controls, very easy to use, and really easy to make time lapses. I've just made maybe 10 minute, 15 minute time lapses. Um, you can do longer ones uh, if you plug it in, or uh, I'm gonna try out with a battery pack. So I've got a battery pack here that will plug in both my camera as well as the uh, Free Fly Movie Cinema Robot, and you can do a longer time lapse like that. I just haven't found a, a safe place to leave the, this device where I wanna leave it very long to do so. Uh, there's three other modes at the bottom. The, the orbit, I, I don't really get. I've tried to make it work. It basically will cause the camera to rotate around the y-axis and then you're supposed to move around your object of interest while it's doing that and keep up with it. I find it a little difficult to do. I find it a little easier just to stay in um, Majestic and maybe tilt the camera up and then do it by hand. The same with a barrel roll. I, it's neat feature, I guess, a little fun thing. Uh, it does work. You, you need to move the camera with it. Otherwise, the motors will bump in or the camera will bump as it's trying to go all the way around. The smart pod is great for setting this on a tripod, go into smart pod mode, and then you just tilt this to what every direction you want and it locks in. Lots of built-in settings for adjusting everything about how quickly it reacts, how much it smooths everything out. So very easy to tailor it. There's custom settings you can set up. Um, the support's a little limited right now because it's very new. There's a lot of tutorials coming that aren't out yet. And in fact, I got a service bolt to notice that uh, anything that was shipped before April 4th has a potential problem with the base if you're on a tripod and you're putting pressure on it, like maybe you're carrying it around or putting it in an angle or trying to use it like a selfie stick or something, you can actually separate out the base. So they're offering uh, an exchange unit for that. A couple little things, I also found that the camera sometimes the app would disconnect from the uh the movie so it would no longer talk to it and i would need to reconnect it it's pretty easy to do i would turn it off frequently to save battery or walking around and it would have to reconnect it when i turn it off turn off here and then i turn off my camera and then it locks into position here and it makes it easy just to it's a little unwieldy but you can carry the whole thing in one hand and tuck it down, you know, if you're walking, I was walking in some neighborhoods that might not be really great neighborhoods and I want to be a little indiscreet. And it's easy to do, easier than other solutions out there uh, to work with. So overall, uh, I think it's a little bit on the pricey side at 299, especially versus your alternatives, but uh, a great, great uh, piece of hardware from a company that makes much more high-end systems. And I think they've done a wonderful job with this and I'll be using it a lot. <laughs>